day 9 of the novena to the Holy Spirit. On this last day of the novena, we reflect on the Holy Spirit as the sanctifier. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the Catholic tradition has long appropriated certain works to particular persons within the Trinity. We speak of God the Father as the Creator, and we speak of God the Son as the Redeemer, and we speak of God the Holy Spirit as the Sanctifier. In these nine days, we have pondered, we have prayed, we have reflected on the mystery of the Holy Spirit. These nine days remind me of what Pope John the 23rd asked the church to do. When he called for the second Vatican Council, the Pope invited the church that it should read the Acts of the Apostles and relive the time when the disciples were together in the upper room preparing to receive the Holy Spirit. There they joined in prayer along with several women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus. I am sure we have just done that. When we speak of the Holy Spirit as the sanctifier, what we are calling to mind is that the Holy Spirit is the gift of God, given to believers. This Holy Spirit that is given to believers is given for a purpose. That it helps Christians to grow in their spiritual life towards union with God. And that union with God is our sanctification. If you like, that union with God speaks of our holiness. You will recall that the Second Vatican Council said to us, all people are called to holiness. And that goal is possible if we realize that the Holy Spirit is at work in us drawing us to God and to union with God. When we reflect on how the Holy Spirit works in us, how the Holy Spirit directs us towards God, and how the Holy Spirit is God's gift, our aid to holiness, what comes to my mind are the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It is this Spirit who is given as a gift, who imbues us with the gifts of the Spirit. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, talk of the gifts of the Holy Spirit invites us to be broad-minded, to understand the gifts of the Holy Spirit for what they are. For in the scriptures, we read of the gifts of the Holy Spirit discussed differently. For example, St. Paul speaks of the gifts of the Holy Spirit in his letter to the Corinthians. According to Paul, these gifts of the Holy Spirit can be divided into three groups. They are doing gifts that is faith, miracles, and healing. They are spoken gifts, the gift of tongues, interpretation, and prophecy. They are knowing gifts, the gift of knowledge, 
wisdom and discernment. And yet you and I know of other gifts that the church says we receive at confirmation. And those gifts we find in the book of Isaiah. To be precise, Isaiah chapter 11 verses 2 to 3. Isaiah speaks of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And it's those gifts of the Holy Spirit that we name wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude, piety, and fear of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, whether discussed by Paul or discussed by Isaiah, they are given so that they may build the body of Christ. What Paul speaks of as the gifts of the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, being able to heal, being able to interpret and to discern, they are what we call charisms within the church. A charism is a gift given to the church, not for its own use. They may be given to individuals, but they are given so that they may help the body of Christ and form it. I always want to think of the gifts of the Holy Spirit vis-a-vis -vis the fruits of the Holy Spirit. We read of the fruits of the Holy Spirit in St. Paul's letter to the Galatians, in Galatians chapter 5. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are given by God as God desires to enrich his peoples. And they say nothing to us about the holiness of the individual person. God is not inhibited by our inadequacies. If God chooses to give a gift, he does not revoke it. And hence, we can have a gift of the Holy Spirit sitting inappropriately, if we may use that term, in other individuals. Their lives do not correspond to the gift that has been given to them. And yet they can continue to use that gift, whether for the good or for the bad of the church. God does not stop them. And yet the fruits of the Holy Spirit speak of who the individual person is. For the fruits of the Holy Spirit is say the life of the individual person has been taken over by the Holy Spirit and that person is docile to the Holy Spirit and he lives and acts according to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. And so as we come to the conclusion of our novena, we pray that those gifts of the Holy Spirit that have been given to each and every one of us may find in us individuals who are willing to cooperate with the Spirit, who will use the gifts that have been given to them to bear fruit, and fruit that will last. Is those fruits that change the face of the earth. It's those fruits that speak of our union with God. It's those fruits that speaks of our belonging to the church. As an aside, I think there is a criteria that we can use to judge whether the gifts of God, when they are used, they are used in accordance with the will of the Spirit or the will of God. When the gifts of the Spirit manifest in love, when the gifts of the Holy Spirit draw us closer to others and they speak of unity, then we can say, yes, the Spirit is at work in us and it is bearing fruit. May God, who continues to pour out His Spirit, Breathe his breath upon us. 
And may we, as we inhale God's Spirit, be renewed from the innermost part of our being so that we may live as witnesses to the presence of Christ, who is manifest in the Spirit.